I just told them about the awesome but hi everyone uh please mute your uh phones for now we're just waiting for everybody to to call in please I'm there, right? Um, hi, everyone. Can you hear me? Alaji Fati, can you hear me? Yes, I'm hearing. Yes, I can okay. hear you. Yes, we can hear you. Okay. We are hearing you very well. Very fine. Okay. okay, we're just giving another two minutes maybe for people to, to um, get in. We've posted the link in the group so everybody can just click on the link. Um, and and, and um, access the meeting. So we'll wait another two minutes for people to come in. Okay, that's fine. All right, thank you. Uh, 
All right, hi everyone. Uh, my name is Umi Bacheli and welcome to this uh, session um, of the present.
Hi, can everyone hear me? Yes, ma'am. Okay. You can hear me now or previously? Yes, we can hear you now. We are hearing you live. Okay, because actually I was I was talking, but <laughs> I was on mute. I, I'm sorry, everyone. Um, thank you for joining. The, this uh, technology is still new to me. Um, I was apparently on mute. Uh, just to introduce myself again, my name is Umi Bachili, and I'm calling um, um, we're from Sahel Films Academy, which is a um, academy that is a, a, a pressure group slash academy slash training institute because we actually set it up to enable the youth to um, be trained on media so they can actually uh, the youth can use the media to advocate and to put their voices um, to have their voices heard so this is why we set up the academy and uh, welcome everyone once again uh, the project we're actually going to be reviewing today is uh, um, to enhance the credibility of the constitutional reform process in the Gambia. Um, with the new Gambia in 2016, we were all excited and yearning for change and also looking forward to a new constitution. Um, this project, uh, with this project, we're actually trying to understand the processes surrounding our civic rights and responsibilities. Now we cannot talk about that without talking about constitutions. Um, the constitution uh, is the fundamental law, um, has the fundamental laws that regulates the manner and way in which the organs of the state operate. And this is the judiciary, the legislature and the executive. Um, the constitution, a constitution um, of any society provides a legal basis for the existence of that, so, of that body, which is the overall society. The constitution also establishes the rights and obligations of the members individually as a country um, or um, as a whole. The constitution also defines and sets the aims and objectives of that body as well as the values, standards, rules, processes and institutions of that society. Um, uh, this is just an overview of what a constitution uh, is, 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 is about. Um, it's also a performance assessment and an accountability tool that determines the health and strength of any body and its members. When we talk about body here, we're talking the, about the country as a whole. So therefore, a constitution is usually set in a kind of language and structure that makes it long lasting, difficult to change, and this is intentional and sustainable in order to cater for the present and future needs of that society. When we say difficult to change, uh, uh, that doesn't mean it's not amendable or it's not, it's not um, that, that because we, the people that are drafting the constitution would also realize that times change and, and people evolve and societies also change and there's needs and demands. Uh, for example, there was a time where, um, uh, now it has, you know, we, we talk about uh, the women's rights in the constitution and things like that, um, because times are changing and things are evolving. There was a time where women were not even allowed to vote. So, and these are some of the is issues that come up and, and change in the constitution. Now we're seeing more and more focus being made on the youth participation as well. Um, so um, in terms of um, history of constitutions in the Gambia, um, um, Aladi Fati, uh, my co-facilitator, will, will um, come in and talk about the constitutions in the Gambia, the history and evolution. Aladi? Yes, Ma. Hello, guys. Um, as you rightly mentioned, we welcome you all on board once more again. And uh, my responsibility here is to talk on the history of constitution in, in the Gambia, which as you all are aware, it has been a long struggle up to date um, because I mean, currently there's another history that has been made a part of concern about that. Um, but before going further, we let's try to give us, give us ourselves a synopsis of uh, a background, little knowledge of a constitution. 
a constitution is the fundamental law that regulates the manner and dictate the way of our life in a particular country. And then um, that's a simple definition of constitution, but uh, let's uh, quickly go to the history of constitution in the Gambia because um, uh, the Gambia became a colony in 1816. But in 1894 to, 18, to 1902, the constitution building in the Gambia also, you know, dates back to the colonial period, particularly when the country became a full-fledged colony. History of constitution in the Gambia started in 1902, in the colonial period, when the Gambia became a full-fledged colony. As you can see, several attempts were made from there until 1962, which set the stage for elections that every, every con uh, constituting the House of Representatives. This also created a 32 member representative and set the motion for the Gambia to attain internal self-rule or republic status in 1963. The PPP government won majority seats and the governor appointed Sadawda Kairaba Jawra as a prime minister and asked him to form his cabinet in 1965. The first referendum was held, but yes votes dealt short of the two-third majority by only 758 votes. The second referendum was held and the two-third of the majority was meant and the Gambia was declared an independent republic on 24th April, 1970. Another constitutional process led to the creation of the 1970 Republican Constitution. In 1994, there was a military takeover. The PPP government and, and PPP government and uh, 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 suspended a part of the 1970 Constitution when the military took over. That was exactly what they did. In 1996, a new Constitution was drafted and subjected to a referendum. August 1996. In 97, a new constitution came into force. In 2017, a constitutional review commission was set up by the government of the Gambia after a new administration came into place in December 2016. In 2018, an act of parliament was asked to be the president, was set to be the president and the commissioners were sworn in. What is the importance of a constitution? Now let's do a, a two few things on that. The importance of constitution one, protection of individuals, freedom and fundamental principles of governance, limits the, flow, limits the government's you know, powers and establish a system of a check and balance, place the government's power in the hands of a citizens, define the laws of a particular country. And, um, no out means uh, uh, no out means useful so uh, basically those are the brief synopsis of uh, importance of a constitution and um, as you rightly uh, mentioned uh, uh, we're talking about the history of constitution in the gambia here um, you can see the constitution protect uh, individual right and as i had mentioned earlier on so let's uh, do a bit of the the constitution the limits the power of the government and establish a system of check and uh, balance. Quickly, let's um, uh, go to the uh, the 2020 uh, draft the constitution. You know, a more progressive uh, constitution. The draft constitution is organized in a preamble of uh, 20 chapters, four schedules. You know, and then the the preamble also draft the constitution is uh, shorter and more or progressive uh, than that of the 1997 constitution and includes the will of the people of the Gambia for democracy, good governance and uh, separation of power, the values of national unity, cohesion, peace, as well as a respect for the rule of law and fundamental rights and freedoms. And if you look at uh, the 
other side of it, because if you look at that, when you talk about uh, the constitution here, uh, the aim, that is the uh, to aim a meaningful dialogue. Constitutional reforms, the CRC, identify issues and draw the attention of uh, Gambians and other stakeholders to an issue document that contain 300 uh, 369 issues to help guide uh, the draft process. The most contentious issues among includes the issue of making the Gambia a secular state, Islamic state, term limit for the president, president and then uh, other issues uh, that uh, we've uh, seen for the first time, the Alcalos and Sefos to being, you know, subjected to an election. And um, we do, do, uh, do a little bit of um, the gist of the draft constitution that is a marginalized group participants. So um, what we do now, um, because we don't have that much time, let me um, give um, another presenter, lecturer, who's going to take you through to the uh, gist of the draft constitution of the Gambia. Uh, John Ogozi, welcome to the program as well. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So briefly, I'll just talk on the, briefly, talk on the, the gist of the draft constitution what the job condition actually has and uh, offers to the Afghans before it was put out by the National Assembly. Um, the job constitution increased the members in the National Assembly from 58 to 69 members, of which 14 supposed to be women exclusively, with two elected from each of the seven administrative areas. It also gave more representation to people with disabilities, with two members being in the House, that's increased from one that is presently um, the case in the National Assembly. So the two members are supposed to be uh, represented in the National Assembly among those who are disabled. And also the government should offer much to young people in the Gambia, as we all know the means make up about 60% of the Gambian population. So that job is going to have a lot of impact on the young people. And it also made, uh, provision for 10% of all candidates who are supposed to stand for National Assembly election are supposed to be selected from the youth group. And to show the wide consultative process that was involved in uh, drafting the political conversation, they met with women groups, youth groups, people with disabilities and community elders to identify specific wishes and aspirations of the people that should be included in the draft constitution. And quickly to the rights that um, are enshrined in the job constitution. Um, as you, I know some of us may not be aware, but the rights in the job constitution, in the French job constitution, were increased from what we had in the 20 in the last constitution. The job constitution actually increased rights to about 38 and some of those rights are, are here list, are listed here we just need to highlight of them since we don't have much time the right to life right to fair administrative action protection of liberty right to fair trial protection from slavery safety human trafficking and forced labor freedom of expression freedom of the media right to human dignity and protection against torture and inhumane treatment, freedom of the media, access to information, protection of rights to property. Um, good, good afternoon. Good afternoon. I hope you're all here. Um, so I don't know if you are you are a little bit far from your microphone or some something like that, but we are I am I I personally am struggling to hear you. Oh sorry for that. Yes, John, try to pu uh, pull it closer. I can't hear you very well either. I think it's my computer. Um, okay, I'll, I'll just come in for, for, our, for a minute or Hello. so 
whilst uh, John is adjusting yes. his uh, system. Okay, it's better now. Um. Okay. So yeah, it's still a bit far, uh, but but let me. Up what I said. Okay, finish up. Um, okay. Moving to the rights in the constitution, I was saying that the 2020 draft constitution actually um, enacted more rights for Gambians compared to the 1997 constitution. And some of those rights are highlighted on your screen. They include the right to life, right to fair administrative action, protection of liberty, right to fair trial, protection from slavery, safety, human trafficking and forced labor, freedom of expression, right to human dignity and protection against torture and inhumane treatment, the freedom of the media, protection of right to property, access to information, right to privacy, freedom of religion and conscience, freedom of assembly. Um, there are many, many more here listed. Uh, we might not have more uh, much time to call out all the rights, but you should be aware that the rights in the 2020 draft constitution were much more much more as compared to the 1997 constitution. And, and I think I will, I think I will now skip that. Um, the now skip portion that, of the uh, rights portion of the rights to the state. different organs of the state. All aware, as we are all aware, the state has, the state has separate, organs to help, separate organs to help um, facilitate its function. Um, facilitate its function. Like the, there is the, the Gambia operates under the, the Gambia operates under powers, the principle of separation of powers, of powers in which the three organs of the state are separated to perform their core functions in all influence of any other organ of the Gambia, state. There are three such in Gambia, there are three such organs, and they are the executive, and they are the, executive, the, legislative, and the legislative, and the judiciary. Taking a quick look at the legislative, taking a quick look at the legislative arm of the state. Um, okay. um, the legislative uh, arm of the state, as we know, the constitutes of the National Assembly and who are members representing different constituencies in the Gambia. The clerk of the assembly and staff who work in the assembly. There's also the executive, There's also the executive as, we aware, as we are all aware, headed by the president of the country, the vice president, and his, vice president and his, and his cabinet members. The case of the Gambia constitutes the court, judges, judges counsel, counsel, judicial police, judicial police and the court, court clerk, staff. and the court staff. The judiciary, the judiciary is a system of and applies, and the, and applies laws the laws in the, in the of the state. Um, at, this um, point, just, at this point, I will just at this point I will just briefly ask if I'm being heard in my sound is as good as I before. John, John, let me okay, please come uh, in here. Okay. All right. Okay, all right. All right, thank you very much. Um, so everyone, um, thank you for the presentations, Alaji and John. Um, we're very limited in time. In fact, um, we had a very difficult time yesterday just trying to figure out whether to move ahead with this um, presentation. It was supposed to be much longer and broader, but in light of um, what happened at the National Assembly, we. Um, first, we didn't want to disappoint the group who has been, you know, all of you that have been in the group um, debating and discussing some of these issues with us. Um, so we just decided to proceed, even though our partner had asked us to um, sort of hold hold back a little bit until we re-strategize on the way forward. But um, just um, like John was saying, um, the, the, the size of the National Assembly in the 2020 draft can can you we mute the the phones please the size of the national assembly um was increased from 58 to 69 members in which um 14 must be um women elected and two elected from each of the seven administrative areas um persons with disabilities have been empowered to have two members to represent them in the national assembly um, 10 percent of the of the um, candidates for the national assembly from each political party must be a youth 
um, chapter four of the 1997 constitution gave us 17 rights and chapter six of the draft constitution gave us um, 38 rights. So these are some of the things that we've seen um, to be a little bit, you know, more progressive, if I can say, in terms and also the, the whole combination of rights that have been included in the, in the um, new draft. So at this point, what I would want to do, I would want to have a discussion with the group in terms of the way forward. And um, please let's um, raise our hands and try to keep our phones mute. And we'll just get in, in, into the discussions um, because we all know what happened. Um, the outcome of the, of the um, votes was 31 yes and 23 no. And 42 votes, yes votes were needed in order for the um, draft bill to, to go to referendum for the people to decide. Um, Gambia has only had three referendums, um, one in 1965, in 1970, and 1996. The argument in 1996 was that a lot of people um, did not really understand, um, did not understand, you know, what, what they were voting for. So the CRC in this case did a lot of consultations prior to the draft um, constitution um, going to the National Assembly. But do you think that, um, you know, there was adequate engagement done after it was presented to the, to the, to the um, National Assembly? Um, is this where we were, as civil society organizations as well, is this where we were supposed to go out and talk to people and lobby? But just give us your feedback on what you think went wrong. Um, what is the way forward to move ahead? We have about 10 minutes or so. Um, into this call. So please give us your feedback and then we can continue the engagement as well in the group. But this was just a formal um, get together, sort of a bit more formal than the WhatsApp group. And then we'll keep having these engagements um, as, as time goes on. So tell us your feedback. Let us know what you think were some of the issues, especially pertaining to you, the youth, the young people pertaining to, you know, there was right for education and all those things in the, in the draft constitution. Um, what do you think went, went wrong? What do you think could have been done better? What do you think uh, moving forward we can, we can do in terms of um, just having a more progressive constitution in place um, 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 going forward? Thank you very much. I'll just open up for, for discussions now. Thank you. Okay. Um Sorry, madam, before we take on the any one who want to raise a concern, because I'm following the message here. Some are saying they were not hearing you, but I want to elaborate a bit on what you've been saying. Like uh, you've been talking about the way forward, even though we all have seen how the new draft constitution pan out at the National Assembly. So madam was just saying, if anybody wanted to take part, and it's, the reason we even have a short time that was because of um, um, our program schedule has been changed and then uh, the sponsors even wanted us to cancel it but uh, because of madam and the team they decided to go ahead at least to bring people together uh, for to have a beautiful session like uh, like this and um, if anybody want to be part of this uh, broadcast you can also raise your hands as you rightly mentioned you can raise your question and comment then you, and we proceed to the next level and uh, can um, the video also is something else here? Yeah. So those are going to be the things that you know we are discussing. So that's it. That, that exactly that was what she was saying. For those who are saying, because I'm seeing Badu and um, uh, um, the other people also are saying that they are not hearing what she was saying. So those are things. So if anybody wants to be part of the thing, you can raise your hand and then you also raise your challenge and we see because now we're talking about way forward. Yeah, that's it. Okay, let Badu come in. Um, we, we actually uh, have a screen to play now. Please let's listen and then uh, to the uh, speaker and then we'll come in to have our input. Thank you. Let me play it, I can play. <laughs> I'm 
Okay, John, I think we can open up the floor for discussions, please. Any of the provisions referred to. Hello, we can, we can start the discussions, please. Thank you. Hello. Hello, everyone. Go ahead, Paul. Go ahead. Yes. 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 Paul, are you coming in or I should? Um, hello, everyone. Uh, this is uh, Badu. Uh, yeah, yeah, you're listening to. Are you guys hearing me? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Uh, this is Badu uh, once again. Um, officially, Ali Umane. Um, finally, a political science student at the University of the Gambia. And of course, uh, before I delve into the, the matter, uh, for the fact that the time is limited, I must also have to commend the work of uh, Sahel uh, Academy, of course, and the network, and uh, also the partners uh, in uh, uh, hosting such a show. Um, yes, to the actual matter, I think um, with the presentation we had uh, so far is, uh, uh, I mean, it's great. I must commend it. Uh, my uh, whole take in the 2020 draft to build and in contrast to the 1997 constitution. Um, um, this is my view, my personal view, not necessarily. Uh, I mean, um, I think we all will all have uh, certain views regarding uh, issues that we face as a society. I think um, this constitution that uh, was rejected uh, just a few days ago. Uh, one could say is one of the best constitutions Gambia would uh, ever uh, produce uh, uh, for the fact that uh, we've seen uh, even the changes though the evolution of uh, uh, constitutional changes that happen in the country this is uh, one of a kind whereas uh, the principles uh, which uh, I mean flourish uh, or, or a, a, a principle that accommodate uh, a progressive uh, constitution was seen. Uh, inclusiveness was part of it for the fact that the CRC had to go around the, the entire nation to meet people and take their I mean, opinion regarding uh, how they should be governed. And also the, the main principle that, uh, of course, every constitution, uh, constitution uh, to my understanding, should convey, that is the principle of justice, uh, the fairness, the freedom, and uh, also equality. We've seen all these things have uh, been captured in the 2020 uh, draft Um I'm sorry for my for, for the background noise. So I, I'm out, and then I had to lodge somewhere to, to do this. Um, what I say is, uh, I think 
um, in contrast to the 1997 constitution, when there was a draft, when they drafted the 1996 to 1997 constitution, um, as uh, Bachelet said, many people didn't even know what they voted for or what they were going to vote for. As a result of that, we've seen uh, what it yielded to uh, for many Gambians. And um, you look at this uh, very constitution that is uh, being rejected for, I would say, for personal and political reasons, uh, it's totally different. Um, he, uh, looking at the, the level of civic education from 97 to date, you could say uh, Gambia move, uh, I mean, exponentially when it comes to, I mean, rise of uh, civic level of civic education, even though still now what could challenge that, but we've seen um, rises of, uh, I mean, people have been, uh, I mean, knowing their civic, uh, I mean, rights and also what is the relationship between them and the government, the government and the government. We, we've uh, many people could attest to the fact that this is the current, uh, I mean, status quo. So the constitution as a whole, I believe, was progressive and it was, it was also developmental, uh, developmental for the fact that, uh, I mean, issues that we, we've been all yearning to see or we, we've been all crying to, uh, I mean, to ask our representatives to put in our, I mean, Supreme Book, we are all captured there when it comes to the right, when it comes to the position of youth, when it comes to our own representation, even women being represented there, even the marginalized group, all these areas we have been captured and also, um, uh, most importantly, even our right to education, some of these things, we are all captured there. And then uh, looking at the reasons why this uh, Supreme Book was reject, uh, rejected, rather, I would say it's personal for the fact that uh, most of the reasons that they raise in the House are that uh, precipitated for them rejecting. I would say it's personal. They said most of the points that were raised is section 54 of, uh, of the 2020 bill. It talks about the right of mar uh, the, the married, uh, I mean, right to have a family, and also even uh, I mean, the, the remuneration of the judiciary. Some of these points. I think I'm not going to say they are irrelevant, but for the, for the fact that. Um, Okay, let me put it this way. Every constitution, you look at the element of the constitution, you look at the nature and also the content. The nature of this constitution, all of us will agree that um, uh, it's progressive. And you look at the content, then you will come and debate. Do we have 100%, uh, I mean, uh, I mean, 100% of our wishes is being represented there. You could say, okay, 95% is being represented. Why not we vote for this? It goes to, uh, for the assent to the president, then we go for the referendum. So from there, Yes, there are entrenched clauses. In fact, the Justice Minister made it clear that, in fact, there were, there were no, unless it, it is made by the National Assembly. When it go back to the House, then we can, they have the right, they are the sole body that is responsible to, of course, amend the Constitution. This is where as they could keep in and also, I mean, I mean, some of those areas that they believe it's not progressive to, uh, according to them. But we believe, uh, I, I, in fact, I post this on my status and I, uh, this is where I stand. I said, now I have enough reason to believe that uh, they the government is responsible for this. All those defected UDP, uh, I mean, MPs, uh, plus, uh, plus APRC, we, all, we will all access to the fact that APRC, we know they were, they were going to oppose this constitution. So defected UDP members who, went, who are now called independent candidates or, or N NPP representatives, they all voted against this. And there was this uh, celebration that was done by some of them. I've seen high, high rankers, in fact, people who have been high positioned in the government, putting uh, some of those things on their status, celebrating that the constitution that Gambians want to see, it's been rejected. They call it evil, the evil book. This to me, it's, uh, it's kind of signal something. Uh, there's a politics of poverty within our I mean, entire system and it has to be sanitized. If people out there are going to do certain things for based on their uh, personal interests, I believe Gambia, we have a long way to go. Civil societies will also have a long way to go. To go and this is included uh, we have to reach out to many people as we can so that we enlighten people about some of these issues i also blame us us for represent are uh, going to vote for people that would at the end of the day turn out to be uh, i mean i mean what of uh, i mean irrational uh, among the rational for instance uh, you look at uh, I, in fact i had to go to facebook and publicly oppose what my uh, constituency member did and i did it publicly and i told them if you want let let him not win call me and i'm sure he's not going to call me uh, forever i said you went there for a political reason and you uh, you objected to this bill what is your reason you've never even uh, i mean given a word in the national assembly some of these reasons one could say are based on political uh, sentiment they are political and not for our uh, i mean uh, national national uh, i mean uh, i mean objective so per se for the fact that time is also not on my side uh, this is where i'm going to conclude thank you
Um, um, Badu, do you think also that maybe the CRC needed to um, engage the public a bit earlier so they can hold the MPs accountable for some of these statements that they were saying uh, from the people when they never, uh, a lot of them never really engaged the, the, the constituents anyway? Uh, yes, I, I think uh, yes. to say we are not going to blame them also. Uh, okay, to blame them also, it will be uh, I mean uh, very minimal. They have they, they did all they what uh, the, the, all what they supposed to do. In fact, the the points that are raised by the MPs in the house regarding what uh, CRC should do. You look at these points. You look you you compare this with the 1997 constitution. What is the difference? You tend to see that look these people they have they were just there to filibuster as uh, filibusters just to prolong the debate. But their intention was very clear even prior to this being going to the house. So I would not blame the CRC that much. Uh, someone mentioned a point that the CRC should also meet the national. Assembly prior. And I think they already did that before, prior to this. So this copy was presented to them, uh, in fact, prior to them going to, uh, for, for, for it to be officially as a promulgation bill. So I don't think I need to blame them that much, even if there should be blame, say, saying they should come earlier to the people. Yes, um, that, that was supposed to be done, but the impact that would have on this, uh, the decision that happened uh, last few days, uh, I think it would be also very minimal. So I, I must commend the CRC for the work they did. Yes. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, we'll, we'll open the floor for others to come in. Uh, I mean, but I'm sorry, I think I need to clarify one thing. I talked, I said, I said they, the reason that they raised, and in fact, few of these reasons, in fact, I mean the main, the people who objected to the constitution, the people who rejected it. Some of them were asking for, I mean, uh, the benefits of the National Assembly members, for them to be hard in drivers. They were issued, in fact, raising issues that were irrelevant, that were in fact out of, uh, I mean, the top, they were talking about CFOs uh, being elected. They were uh, appointed and now elections and something like that. And they were even talking about the autonomous of the National Assembly. That we all know, it's, 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 it's already there, the supremacy of the National Assembly. And that, that begs the question, that, uh, in fact, the, the question that many should ask, do they even know uh, the function of the National Assembly? We all know the supremacy of the National Assembly. They have the power to do, I mean, as Delon, the French philosopher will say, to do anything uh, except turning a man into a woman. But they, some of the, them don't know even some of these areas. You look at, the, they in fact said, uh, they, there needs to be, I mean, offices for MPs. I think they have their own offices in the National Assembly. That is their office already. And one thing they failed to do also before this is reaching out to people. I barely see National Assembly members have been offices because what happened is prior to election you represent a political party after election now you represent the entire constituency now you need to have an office or an area or wherever you might call it whereas you meet every individual people will come and then launch their company launch, I mean, bring issues regarding i mean their constituency we've not seen this every every corner uh, within these constituencies that we see their own Political bureau that turned into political uh, bureau. So, meaning okay, any decision but, that but we have to take, let's, let's, let's give an opportunity for others to come in. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you.
Hello, any other contributions? Let's talk about the way forward. What can we do? Okay, I, I can't hear anyone. So if no one else has contributions, we can we can break now. I'm sorry. Anyone else has contributions on the way forward? Yes, uh, I think, but Chile. Yes, go ahead. Yeah, so I think someone wants to talk, but I'm not sure what, what is keeping the passing. Anyway, I think we raise forward, as I did in, the, in my intro, is, uh, I mean, civic education, enlightened people um, should be core. Mm -hmm. And this is uh, this should be fundamental, and I think we should, uh, more programs should be I mean available to the public to know their rights. Uh, people, most people, in fact, this can create voter apathy. Many people will lose interest in uh, politics, and at the end of the day, what that does is sit the same thing and uh, on ending circular. Uh, I mean, uh, I mean, end of poverty, politics of poverty, rather, we, because we'll see the same thing happening. I mean, trending. So what what will happen? What I would propose is civic education fundamental core, is fundamental and core in ensuring that people uh, I mean, participate in how they should be governed. As uh, scholars will say, uh, people lack in the basic knowledge of their, I mean, uh, democracy cannot flourish where people, they, they, they don't know their right and in fact there is poverty, which is democracy cannot pro uh, flourish in that society. We know what uh, Socrates also said, when you don't do politics, politics do you. Many people think if they don't participate, it has nothing to do with their lives. So they don't know. That is why they're thinking that, and you cannot blame them for that. But civil societies, individuals, youth groups, should ensure that they put this, uh, some of these things as part of their objective, ensure that they reach out and, and, and I mean, bridge, bridge the vacuum that is created, uh, that is the civic uh, awareness is very low, and this should be, uh, I mean, catapult to where we all wish to see Gambia. If many people knew they are right, if Gambians knew exactly why these people are there, in fact, they are our servants. These people are supposed to be serving us, not us doing, uh, not the other way around. Then we'll understand our functions, our role in consolidating the gains of democracy. And this is where we can move as a nation. But if we don't have some of these things uh, in place, civic societies are uh, not taking the bold step, individuals, even the media playing its role, then we will keep having the same thing. History will keep repeating or the fact of history will keep repeating itself. we we'll go to the next election also uh, propose the same thing and at the end of the day uh, our resources will go to west uh, because of political gains just for self-individual political interests and uh, that should not be the case for Gambia now. It's uh, long overdue, 50 years to 60 years uh, of independence now supposed to be used. We're talking about other things, not civic education. That is my take. Thank you.
on the system. Yes. All right, uh, yes. Somebody want to come in? Somebody want to come in? Because I also want to say something, just a short. Call this back. Call this, call this back. Um, um, yes, by Aladji yes, Conte. You wanted to say something, come on. Yeah, hi everyone. Yes. Thank you very much. Sir. Can you guys hear me? Yes, we are hearing you. Yes, we are hearing you. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, I, will, I want to ask some uh, panelists into what body was. I think he's right. And then I also think that the National Assembly acted pretty much properly. You know, and most of them, I, I really started to think, I doubt where they. Even go through the national or the constitution and made a research, you know, to understand what actually uh, people want. Because I believe some of the reasons given by the business assembly members, uh, for example, uh, the right to marry and then the remuneration of the judges and other and other provisions in the draft constitution. And I think they, they had the understanding there. And most of them, you know, most of them, they, they, to me, they pretended. As if they've consulted their people, which, to my opinion, is not, it's not, it's not right. It was not right. But, but, Can you hear me? Yes. Hello. Yes, we are hearing yes, you. Yes, we are hearing ahead. you. You can go ahead. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I also think that the way forward is situation, you know, many decisions have to understand. They have to understand that. But the use not should know their right to responsibilities towards the national assembly member. You no, know, the national assembly members should be held accountable for their actions. For example, in the next election, we should hold them accountable for what they have done on this, for this constitution. Because some of them, what they did there was not actually just the greater population and the interest of the youth, it's my opinion. So some of them were giving some reasons which were not cogent enough, which were not reasonable to justify the rejection of the entire draft constitution. Because most of them, the reason they were just, some of the, some of the justifications, some of the reasons that they were giving, some of the provisions they were quoting, were not, were not even actually, were not even actually an interesting clause in the constitution, which can be tempered, which can be even easily kept by the national assembly in the long run. So to my opinion, what they've done was not, so it is not the citizens now. You should be able to do this with the know their rights and responsibilities and know what the National Assembly are for. And know what okay, uh, people Thank you very much. Uh, 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 we are running out of time. So if it's our lack of mind, I think that there is a survey link on the check your chat box. There is a post. Civilization, surveillance. Everyone is expected to feel that out that of that That's the criteria for reforms for megabytes that those who are participating in this conference. And that's the only way you can track those who participated in the end of the conference. So please kindly check the survey box, fill out the information. They're very brief about six to seven questions and submit. Thank you very much. So we will be ending this call. Okay, I'll let you have some. Okay, I'll let you have some. Thank you, John. Thank you, John. Yes, I just want. Uh, yes, I just want the panda of what I'm doing. Panda of what I'm doing. The 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 panda of what but you, you did talk, you, about, you did talk about it since that is very important. It's very important. Since that is very important. Is very important. important. Is the Gambia doing it in the is right the way? Is the Gambia doing it in the right way? And in this sense that and I say, in this sense that I say, we, we, 
IEC need to be involved for voter education. Political parties need to be involved in order to screen us of who are going to be their representatives. The stakeholders too, we are part of. But in Uganda, but we are in Uganda, we are in a very funny state. A particular political party, a particular political party will only select someone. Where that person have qualification, so they have any national interest, they only need to know that what they need to know is right now. Them. Right now, that is the problem that we are having at the national assembly. The majority of the MPs have no knowledge about this. No knowledge about this. Only they know. Only they know. They are loyal to a particular political party. So in such situations, in such situations, national interest about this. Right now, this one is the So I agree with you entirely. We need, we need a massive sensitization. Yeah. So I think that is what I want you So I think that is what I want you also on top of that. We don't have that much time. Madam is on yours now. And uh, yours now. All right, then uh, follow us. All right, then uh, uh, follow us. And then that's where we're going to end the chat. Then as John rightly mentioned, you can follow the link and the discussion where you can have your credit to respond back. And then from here, like the party and the rest of the team, till you come again next time. We are still living in the chat box talking for the next five minutes. Chat box will be back. After that, we'll be closing the call. So please, fill out the survey. For the next five to ten minutes, thank you. Next five to ten minutes. Yes, I think the best thing right now we are facing. Thank you for uh, for joining the meeting, everyone. Internet keep coming in and out, but I've been following the discussions. Thank you very much. Thank you.